In this video, we're going to look at how to do an independent t-test in JASP. Um, if you've never used JASP before, or if you've never really heard of it, um, I'm assuming you've heard of it if you're watching this video, but um, on their website, they refer to JASP as a low-fat version of SPSS, so you'll probably see some visual similarities between the two. Also some similarities in the sense that it's very like point and click happy in that sense. So you really just, you know, you click and it does what you want it to do. Um, it's a pretty simplistic program and I think that's why I like it so much. Um, also, when you do tables and stuff in JASP, you can copy and paste them right out of JASP and they're already in APA format, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But that's a little besides the point. Um, JASP is just really a really easy program to um, get to know and to understand, and um, it just very plainly tells you what you need to know, and I really enjoy it, so I hope you will, just as much as I do. Um, before we get started in actually calculating the independent T, um, let's talk a little bit for a moment about what... Um, an independent t-test is and the kind of you know rationalization behind it in what situations would you use an independent t um, things like that so first an independent t-test compares two means based on independent data so data from different groups or different samples of people um, in this data set that we'll be working with um, We'll be trying to determine if invisible people are mischievous. Keep in mind that this data set is entirely hypothetical and um, that invisibility cloaks only actually exist in the world of Harry Potter. So um, we didn't actually give cloaks of invisibility to people. This is just a hypothetical scenario, but we're trying to determine whether or not um, invisible people are more mischievous than their non-invisible counterparts. So. Um, the two groups in this case would be the group that did not have a cloak and the group that did. So we will be calculating whether or not one group is more mischievous than the other by looking at their total number of mischievous acts at the end of a week. So some of the basics of an independent T. Um, one thing, if the sample means are calculated, which I will show you how to do in just a little bit, um, so you can see the mean difference between the two. And um, I'll just kind of take this moment to talk about the null hypothesis versus a research hypothesis. In a null hypothesis, you're um, accepting really that there is no difference between the two groups. If the null is true, then there isn't really going to be a significant mean difference between the two. Um, in a research hypothesis, you are hypothesizing that um, one group is different from another um, in any kind of sense. So in this case, we might be proposing as our research hypothesis that people who are invisible are more mischievous, that their number of mischievous acts is greater than the group of people who didn't receive cloaks because... You know, the people that received cloaks could be seen and more easily caught, so they are less likely to be mischievous than those who were given invisibility cloaks. So um, that would be an example of a research hypothesis, not the null. But since the samples came from the same population, which is what we're assuming here, um, you can expect, like I said, that the means would be roughly equal. Um, so since these two groups of people in this study came from the same population, we're assuming that the mean difference between the two, there really isn't going to be a mean difference, that the means are um, roughly equal. Although it is possible for means to differ by chance alone, um, which kind of leads me into the point of um, variance. There are two kinds of variance, systematic variance and unsystematic variance. Systematic variance is the variance created, <clears throat> excuse me, created by the experimenter's manipulation. 
So in our case, with this data, um, systematic variance would be attributed, attributed to um, the presence of the cloak. We manipulated whether or not these individuals were given a cloak or whether or not they were left without one. Um, so any differences that are attributed to that would be considered systematic variance. On the other side of that, unsystematic variance is variance created by unknown factors. Um, so factor, factors that the experimenter didn't control for. Um, so let's say in this case that we just happened to select people that have a more mischievous personality as is, or maybe the opposite, maybe we selected people that were very reserved and not mischievous. So um, the variance is due to something other than what we manipulated. So uh, that kind of is where the main difference that um, occurs by chance would come into play. So if there is a mean difference, the larger the mean difference, the more confidently we can accept that it is due to systematic variance. Um, the bigger the difference, the more confidently we can assume that the difference is because of the manipulation in that experiment. So um, we use standard error to evaluate the variability between the sample means um, and that kind of comes into play when we're talking about the um, formula for the independent t. Essentially the formula for the independent t um, is really just mean differences over weighted standard error. So those are just some of the basics of kind of the logic behind an independent T and what an independent T really is. Um, so I just wanted to kind of explain those things to you before we got started so that you can know when you're wanting to use an independent T. So essentially you want to run an independent T test if you are comparing two groups of people where the participants are assigned to each group specifically. And now that we have covered some of the basics, let's just go ahead and figure out how to do it in JASP. And it's really very simple. I love how simple this is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that data set that I've been working with. Um, you can see here that it's, you know, cloak versus no cloak. So all you're gonna do is click t-tests and you'll see um, we're going to focus more up here. Um, independent samples T. So just go ahead and click that. Um, now, be sure that you are distinguishing between your dependent variables and your grouping variables correctly. Um, in this case, the dependent variable is the number of mischievous acts. So their level of mischief is what we're looking at is the dependent variable and the grouping variable is whether or not they had a cloak. So I'm just going to move those two things over. I don't even have to click OK and it just spits out um, the T, degrees of freedom, and the p-value. And you can see in this particular case that the p is greater than 0.05 so we wouldn't necessarily say that there was a significant difference in this case. Um, also, I'll touch on this a little bit down here. Um, I have the first one selected because that it's more of the, the null. Um, you're saying that there is like not necessarily a difference. We're not indicating that we believe that there's a difference either way. If I were to select a different one, that would be saying that I think that one group is different from the other in any kind of way. So I'm just going to stick with the top selection here. Um, so this, it really just gives you what you want to know. Um, but there are some additional options that I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So let's say I said earlier that I was going to show you how to calculate the mean difference, that you wanted to know the mean difference between groups. You would just click that box and it would calculate it for you. So you have the mean difference. Um, another thing that I'm going to show you is the effect size. Effect size is very important. 
Um, and I would encourage you to be mindful of that in all of your statistical endeavors. Um, so I just go ahead and I click effect size and it shows me Cohen's D, which is 0.7, which is a fairly good effect size, which is fantastic. Um, so I can also click descriptives and it will show me the group descriptives for um, cloak versus no cloak, you know, the number of participants in each sample, the mean, standard deviation, standard error, things like that. So it really is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So yeah, and this is something else that I just love oh so much. Just click this little drop down arrow right here, or this one maybe, and you can click copy table and it's copied to your clipboard. And the best part is that it's already in APA format. So then you can just go ahead and paste that into your documents. So yeah, um, JASP is pretty straightforward. So I hope you enjoyed it. And this is just how you would run an independent tea.